Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm venturing into my home city of York to dive deeper into cinematic mode, which is one of the features on the new iPhone 13. So, join me as I tell you about the good, the bad, and the ugly of cinematic mode. Cinematic mode, the new feature for iPhone 13. Wrap focus digitally. Experience cinematic mode through front and rear cameras. Shoot in a whopping 1080p resolution. Just like this guy, you'll be going nuts. The cinematic mode. Hope you like my little cinematic mode trailer there. I just think cinematic mode sounds really dramatic, so I wanted to make a dramatic trailer. Okay, let's first talk about the good. The first good thing about cinematic mode is it's really good at recognising faces and most of the time it does a good job about predicting where you want the focus. So right now it's focused on me but if I turn the camera to the side so I'm out of frame it'll focus on the background and then turn it back to me and I'm back in focus. Another really good feature that Apple made quite a big deal about at the keynote was that it will recognise when you're not looking at the camera and it will focus on the scenery behind you. It doesn't always work for me, it's a little bit hit and miss. So for example, if I turn away and look at the minster behind me, hopefully it won't be focusing on my face and it will now be focused on the minster. But then if I turn back to the camera, hopefully it will focus back on me. But another brilliant thing is that you can go in after the fact and change the focus. So if the software hasn't put the focus quite where you want it, you can choose exactly where you want the focus. So if that didn't work that time, let me play that shot again for you so you can see it with my readjusted focus so it takes it off my face and onto the minster. If I turn away and look at the minster behind me, hopefully it won't be focusing on my face and it will now be focused on the minster. But then if I turn back to the camera, hopefully it will focus back on me. Another great thing about cinematic mode, which is one of my favourite features actually, is you can use both front and rear cameras. For me, being able to use the selfie camera to film myself and get a nice bit of depth of field in the background is probably more useful. But whether you want to get cinematic with your vlogging or with just having some nice scenery shots, you can do that on both of the cameras. And also, loving these sun glares, does a really nice job of sun glares really cinematic. Okay, I think Apple did a great job with cinematic mode. I think it is perfect for creating tasty looking bits of social media footage like reels, like stories. I think it can really elevate that type of video. I don't know if it's good enough for true cinematic creators, people who want a bit more of a professional look. I don't know if cinematic mode offers the best possible quality, which leads me into the bad section. For me, there are two main bad points. The first one is that when filming in cinematic mode, you are restricted to only being able to film at 1080p resolution, 30 frames per second. It's not too bad, but I prefer to film 4K resolution, 24 frames per second, so I can get some of that cinematic motion blur. So, cinematic mode isn't really giving me everything I want as a creator. The good thing about this bad point is that I'm guessing most people probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference between 1080p and 4k just casually watching a video especially on YouTube but it would be nice to have the option especially on the pro models the iPhone 13 Pro that I'm filming on now and the Pro Max maybe they could have the 4k 24 frames per second since pros are more likely to be using those pro phones and then maybe just keep the 1080p 30 frames per second on the iPhone mini and the standard iPhone 13. This is all software stuff, so maybe this could be addressed in the next update. Apple, please. The second bad thing about cinematic mode, and you can't deny this, is it looks a bit fake. And that's because it is fake. It's a simulated digital focus. If you have the aperture cranked all the way down to 2.5, so the background is really blurry, definitely struggles to pick out the edges, especially if someone's got loose clothing or wavy hair. It's simply not good enough to get that perfect. But I do think there's a sweet spot between it looking overly fake and still having a nice bit of blur in the background, and that is setting the aperture to around seven, which thankfully you can do after you've filmed it. OK, 
Okay, time to talk about the ugly, and this is ugly. I don't know if this is a software glitch or if it's just a faulty unit that I have here because I've not heard anyone else mention this, but I get this weird freezing when I'm filming on the selfie camera like I am now. If it's just me in the shot, it's absolutely fine, but if I'm transitioning from me to a background without me in the shot or vice versa, it freezes sometimes for a few seconds at a time. It makes the footage unusable. I'll try and recreate it for you. So here we are filming on the selfie camera. It's a nice image of the museum gardens in York. You can already see it's frozen. If I move it back onto me, it sort of unfreezes, but it makes the footage unusable. So let's try that again. We've got it on the background on that lovely wall and then it's frozen there and it glitches and freezes and unfreezes as I sort of come into frame. If I'm filming with me in shot and then I go to the background, and then I bring it back to me in shot. It doesn't seem to be as much of a problem then. It's more of an issue if I've started recording on the background first and then I bring myself into shot. So here's the rear facing camera. I've got the background in shot and then if I bring myself into shot, it shouldn't have done the freezing. But the problem is I'm just guessing where I am on the screen. I can't see the screen from this angle, so I can't see if I'm lined up properly in the shot. So the fact that this just happens on the selfie camera kind of sucks for me because it's when I'm most likely going to use cinematic mode. Maybe it's a software fix. Maybe in an update it can be fixed and the problem will go away. I don't know. Like I said, maybe it's just my phone. Please do let me know if you've experienced a similar problem with your iPhone 13. Let me know in the comments. It'd be nice to know if it's not just me. So overall, I really like cinematic mode. It's great fun to use. It's really satisfying to use actually to see where it puts the focus for you. And then it's also satisfying to be able to go in after and change where you want the focus point. So it is a good tool. The only thing is, I don't know how often I will use it for YouTube videos because I'm restricted to 1080p, 30 frames per second. I don't know, is that a deal breaker? Let me know, do you think you'd be able to tell the difference between watching a 1080p video and a 4K video on YouTube? Is 1080p behind us now or is it still okay to upload videos in 1080p? Let me know in the comments. Okay, that just about wraps it up from a gorgeous autumnal York shot entirely in cinematic mode. It's good, could be better, maybe in the future. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already so you get notified when I upload more tech videos like this. And if you do, I will see you in the next one. Bye.